mystery of stuff. The world prefer noisy, crowded cities and places where they can socialize and interact with their families and friends. Some are simply the opposite. They prefer isolation, staying very far away from people and unnecessary conversations. In today's video, we'll tell you a story about a man who decided to build a house on top of a rock in the middle of the ocean. This is Clingstone, a house built by the American Joseph Wharton in the early 20th century. It is located on a very tiny island in the Atlantic. At first glance, the house looks like it was brought from a mysterious fairy tale, standing tall in the middle of nowhere and surrounded by raging waters. However, the story behind this strange house is more interesting. It all began in 1905 in the city of Georgetown, where Mr. Wharton was an important landowner. At the time, he owned a big house on that land and was proud of it. Joseph dreamt about all of the following generations of the Wharton family living in this house. He wanted it to be a place where all members of the family would gather and celebrate. The man even had additional rooms for his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He thought about everything. Unfortunately, not all things go as planned. One day, Joseph received a letter from the city management. All of his dreams were crushed the moment he read its content. In order for the town to expand, they would need new lands and would have to take away Wharton's estate together with his house. Naturally, the man was furious and started to fight for his rights, but to no avail. The town won the lawsuit in the end. Consequently, his house and all the estates were taken away from him. In the blink of an eye, everything just vanished in front of him. He felt his time came to an end. The event had entirely and thoroughly changed the life of the Wharton family. Of course, the town had to compensate the man for taking his only home by providing him an equivalent residence or enough money to buy another. On the contrary, the Georgetown officials wanted to further humiliate him for suing them. Not only did they strip him from all his possessions, but they also sent him a very poor compensation, a small estate in the outskirts of the town, which was not optimal for building a house there. You might be surprised to hear such a thing happen in democratic America, but things were very different in the early 20th century. Joseph Warden didn't give up and went to many institutions to help him out, but nothing could change what had already happened. The family had no choice but to leave their beloved home. They were very disappointed and went to start a new life. Upset and humiliated, Joseph decided to build a new house far away from civilization, where no one would be able to take it away from him. At the same time, he wanted his house to be large enough to accommodate all family members in many generations to come. After a few days, the man came up with something crazy. He decided to buy a small island near Rhode Island in Narragansett Bay for $200. Although it was a neglected piece of land in the ocean that no one needed, it was the perfect place for Joseph. Nonetheless, this area's geographic features were quite problematic, and it was a naked rock and the thin pedestrian overpass was the only path onto the island. Surprisingly, these difficulties didn't stop Joseph from realizing his dream. Even the officials who sold him the house mocked him for buying such a useless spot, but this only encouraged him to take the challenge. The man felt even more motivated. The construction of the unique house began in 1906. He had to transport all the building materials from the mainland to the island by boats. Amazingly, Joseph didn't hire any masons or workers. Instead, all the family worked together to construct the new home. Thus, the results were unbelievable. On such a small land, a three-story house was built. The construction was correctly done and without any flaws. The new home contained 10 bedrooms and 13 additional ones that were used for other purposes. It also included balconies and patios that overlook the beautiful horizon. His aim wasn't only to build a house on a rock, but there was another motive. The man was determined to protect his family and property so that no one could ever take that away from them. To ensure a comfortable life for his family, Joseph included all communication forms available at the time. After the construction process was complete, the owner named the house Clingstone House, which in botanics describes a pit that is so hard to separate from the fruit itself. In other words, he named the house this way to make clear that this house is part of him, and it will not be easy to take it away from him again. Finally, Joseph made his dream come true and provided his family with the home they were deprived of. 
1938, the only path that leads to the island was destroyed by hurricane winds and strong waves, which made the house more isolated than before. Hence, the only way to get to the place is by boat, since swimming in the cold waters is too difficult. However, this didn't prevent the whole family from gathering on every occasion. His grandchildren playing on the spacious deck around the house was all Joseph wanted. It was as if the house was from another dimension. Unlike the rest of the world, the time had stopped on the island. It stood tall in the middle of the ocean for more than a hundred years. Actually, the Whartons weren't the only or last residents of the unusual home. It had many owners over the years, and all of them enjoyed and loved staying in it. Speaking of which, the last owner of the house was the Woods family, who have lived there for 60 years. Henry, the head of the family, bought the property for $3,600, which is considered very cheap. However, renovating it cost him a fortune. Keeping the house's original look and structure as it is, Henry almost restored and demolished every corner of it. According to the new owner's request, the workers did their best to keep the house's old, unique atmosphere while trying to create a more comfortable home to live in. A more technologically advanced touch was added to the property. It now contains solar panels and a wind turbine for electricity, in addition to home appliances and other devices for collecting and clearing water. They also added a system that decomposes natural waste, filters it, and then it's released into the depths of the ocean as fertilizer. This helps the house residents be completely independent. They didn't need to contact the outer world, which was exactly what the owner wished for. However, what really attracted Henry and made him purchase this amazing house was the touching story behind it. He never regretted spending all that money on it, but is happy to own such a unique home. After the renovation, the house looked more comfortable and warm. Henry's three sons still own the home to this day. The brothers say that the view from the large windows is so fascinating that they sometimes feel like they are in a ward room. The house that was once built as protest became the pride of the whole city. It even attracts tourists from all over the world. Most of them came to take pictures from afar. Yet some are very lucky to have a free tour to the island and around the lovely residence. Joseph Wharton would be so proud. Well, that's about it, guys. If you liked today's video, let us know what you think about it in the comments section below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click on that notification bell so you never miss any new videos.